Hey, I'm Michelle. I have Brigadier General Patrick Michaelis here. He is the Commanding General of Fort Jackson, and you have been here one whole year now. You took over for Brigadier General Milford Beagle, who was moved to Fort Drum, New York. Mm -hmm. How have you adjusted to your first year in South Carolina? Oh, that's a great question. I, uh, I have been here a year, and when I got here, uh, I will tell you the Midlands, the whole community here, uh, gave me and my family what I think was one of the warmest welcomes I've ever had to a, to a post camper station. I mean, I, I'd like to say I'm not from South Carolina, but I am now. Oh. Um, and it, it, it just means the world, I think, not only to me, but all the soldiers and their family members on Fort Jackson to what uh, Columbia and the Midlands does for Fort Jackson itself. So. I think when I came in, uh, my predecessor had three years in command, so uh, tough, big shoes to follow. Uh, and I think uh, what I was able to provide is a, is a fresh perspective. So our campaign plan is focused around four lines of effort, four themes, uh, training and developing leaders, putting people first, quality of life, and community engagement. It's so funny that you say quality of life because you don't really think about the Army and the quality of life. I saw stripes. I mean, <laughs> I know. You you talked about stripes, and um, you know I was a, I was an enlisted guy before I I pinned on uh, second lieutenant bars, and I went to basic training in the place where they film stripes oh, wow. on that drill pad there, and it was no, and it was only four years after the movie came out, and it was nowhere near like how stripes was. <laughs> That's cool. I do think it's interesting that you came from a military background, mm. you know, your dad, your grandfather, mm -hmm. all military. So you've lived that lifestyle and you went into it, which I would imagine would be just like breathing. It's just part of who you are, how you were raised. But you enlisted and you went through your career and you went to school. You took advantage of a lot of those benefits. I did, yeah. I mean, you yeah. got your bachelor's degree, two master's degree. How did you do all that and your job and have a family? That just seems like a lot. I got to meet that guy. <laughs> so um, the, the reality is, is that it was just like you said, it was as natural for me to be in the Army as it was to breathe. So uh, my father was, was an Army officer. My grandfather was an Army Air Corpsman in World War II. Um, when it transitioned over the Air Force, he stayed in the Air Force for 40 years. Uh, I've moved 28 times in 50 years, Whoa. right? So um, the longest place I ever lived was the four years I spent at Texas A&M uh, as a college student. So the, the great thing about the Army is that it presents opportunities for you. Mm -hmm. So um, it presented the opportunity for me to teach at West Point, which said, which said go get a graduate degree and we'll pay for it. Um, and then as uh, I continued to expand uh, my breadth and depth of understanding and, and, and being promoted, they decided to send me to the U.S. Army War College to get, a, get another master's degree. So uh, we believe in continuous learning. Um, we cannot grow unless we, unless we're, we are inclined to learn. Um, there's a lot of experimentation and failure that happens, and uh, it's failure that's not outside the boundaries of illegal, immoral, or unethical. That's a learning experience, mm -hmm. um, and we do that every day at Fort Jackson, and that's how we grow as an Army, to be the best Army on the planet. Now, how did you make that transition? Was your wife from a military background as well? Mm. Was she prepared for this constant moving? I don't think so. Um, so my wife and I met uh, in the first grade. Oh, so when sweet. my when my father was stationed outside a military post in, uh, in Alabama, mm -hmm. um, we went to the first grade together, the third grade together, I moved away to Germany, came back in the eighth grade. We were first boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, in the eighth grade, we kept contact when I moved again uh, during high school, and we caught up with each other 25 years later. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, and it was a surprise for her. She is a social worker um, with a graduate degree in psychology, and she loves solving problems, loves being around people. So I am I'm super blessed by by my, my bride and my best friend. That's awesome. And you've got your kids and you're trying to balance being a parent and, and commanding be, right. Fort Jackson. How right. does that work? So I think of, um, so we always talk about work-life balance. 
Um, I think that's uh, the wrong term. I think it's harmony, right? How do you establish harmony between what you do at work and what you do at home? So, and when I talk to cadre that we have on post about this because they're working some pretty long hours being drill sergeants, I talk about what does it mean to be present in the moment? So there may be 15 conversations going on in the back of my head because I'm predisposed to that. Um, but how do I focus on the moment right now? You may be physically present, but you got also need to be uh, intellectually present, right? right. Um, presence of mind. And I take that same idea of harmony at work with harmony at home. So I, you know, I joke about the fact that I'm an introvert and my wife's an extrovert. You know, I go home and I want to crack open a beer and watch Sports Center, mm -hmm. right? Um, but my wife wants to talk, right? <laughs> yes. And then sometimes I'll fall into the Pavlov's dog as she's talking away and I'm kind of going, uh-huh, yep, you know, tell me more. And But she's smart, you know, she'll catch me like that. I go, why am I doing that? This is the person I love most in the world, right? right? In that particular moment in time, the most important use of my time is right here with her. And I think this harmony idea is one that we don't think about enough. Uh, and presence of mind and mindfulness is a big piece of this. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we'd all be in a much better place if we figured out how to establish harmony rather than kind of doing work-life balance. So much time here versus time here. It's the quality of the time that really matters. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's ever, I don't know, gone to work and you're going on vacation the next day, they know what it's like to be physically at work, but you're running through your packing right. list or your grocery list right. or all right. the things you have to do and not and honestly just spacing out. Right. And I think that's very wise to consider it harmony. Also, when you call it harmony, you automatically take away that division. Mm -hmm. Instead that's of right. this or that, work or life, it's harmony. That's and, very wise. And you know, it's kind of elevating, elevating your thinking in some ways, right? So um, the common, we, we get stuck in these kind of echo chambers of, of discussions here, but uh, the whole idea behind, behind education and learning is, is you, actually, you actually seek to kind of uh, find counterpoints to these things here. And, I, and this idea of harmony is one that's just kind of come to me over the course of the last few years and discussions with people. Um, I hope, hopefully it resonates with those, uh, those young sergeants that are out there on the fort. Um, I love them 100% because they are working hard every day. Right. And they've got families, right? And, it, and many of them live on post. Most of them live in the Midlands here. And we want to make sure that their quality of life, um, not only as they're working hard for their families, is some, something uh, that leads to an outcome that says, I want to come back to Fort Jackson some, someday. Yeah. And I think that's another interesting point is you're not just keeping watch over the people who are learning here mm -hmm. and moving on to the next level, you're also in charge of families. Right. And that's a different animal altogether. Right. How do you, um, how do you find a way to bring the families and the spouses into the fold, especially in moments where something has happened or they're struggling, but still, you know, maintain that, but this is what we do. Yeah. So I, um, I think a lot about how you connect families to resources, but also how you connect them to each other. Mm -hmm. So the connection to resources is 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 pretty mechanical, right? Uh, you make sure you've got the programs in play. They go to the meetings. Uh, the representatives are there, and and we've got access to things like Army Wellness Center and 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 health and holistic fitness that they can access the education centers. But this connecting to each other is such a, it's so much more important because when you find that support network as a young family member who, is, who has been dislocated from their home, right? Like, like my wife was when the first time that, that we moved together right. um, and trying to establish a network of friends and, and, and confidants and people to be able to help you through the struggles of life, whatever they may be. Sometimes it happens organically. Sometimes it happens by you put people together into into situations where they can where they can where they can develop friends. And you know the great thing about social media, in some ways, it's allows it's allowed a different medium by which that happens. Wow. So it seems like Fort Jackson has done a very good job of pouring into the community. Mm -hmm. Every time you turn around, you're there, yeah. and I love that. Um, I love seeing people in uniform who are just running errands just like me. Right. It's a great reminder that we are a military community right. and that we need to love our own and take care of our own. So how can we take care of Fort Jackson? Wow, that's a great
great question. Um, I think I opened with saying how warm of a reception that the Midlands and Columbia has gives to anyone who comes on Fort Jackson. Um, the, the idea of recognizing that what they do is important. Uh, and I also think is get involved in the conversation of what Fort Jackson needs to be next. Um, I, you know, I'm pretty proud of some decisions I've made lately that'll start to allow more of our trainees uh, an opportunity to visit the Midlands, um, to spend some time during uh, graduation day out in the local economy here in uh, downtown uh, Columbia and and uh, and up there by Forest Acres. Um, but I, you know, the I guess the 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 best way I would I would answer your question would be your the support we're getting right now is pretty good. Okay. Please don't stop. You know, <laughs> we, we don't get everything right, but we seek to get most of it right. Okay. On a lighter note, what are some of your most memorable moments? You know, you've In done life? this for a hot minute. Oh. So from the time <laughs> you said yes and you signed those papers to now. Man, I, there's there's 30 years of memorable moments out there. So jumble them all together. Um, I, I will tell you that uh, that in the hardest of times during the many deployments I've been have also been the most um, enlightening of times I guess would be the best way to put it. Whether it was as a young lieutenant um, sitting in the zone of separation uh, between Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Serbs in the uh, in in Bosnia Herzegovina in 1996, adjudicating with another lieutenant um, a mini peace agreement in the middle of a zone of separation, <clears throat> um, leading a cavalry squadron in Baghdad in Eric's correction in Kandahar, Kandahar city, Afghanistan, 2012 to 2013 with a thousand soldiers. Um, you know, working with Afghan police to be able to to create the conditions that they could be in the lead. Um, I mean, all these experiences start to jumble together. Right. You know, deployment after deployment, um, assignment after assignment. But at the end of the day, what do you see? You see, you see your legacy, mm -hmm. right? And that legacy are those soldiers that follow behind you or or surpass you. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's those it's the soldiers and their families um, that are in your mind's eye every single day, uh, the ones that are successful and the ones uh, that that didn't make it too. Right. So, yeah. Okay, so I might show my ignorance here. Brigadier General, that's a right. one star general, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did it feel like when you got that star? <sighs> um, the opportunity to continue to serve mm -hmm. with the ability to impact um, an organization you love in a much more pronounced way. So uh, the, the, the role of the general officer, and there are very few of them in, in, in the Army, uh, really is to look over the horizon of where the Army needs to be um, and, and work with the faculties that you have and, and the resources that you have to move it there. Uh, it's also to inspire. Right, and you inspire by presence. Um, you're also you also live in a bubble, right? right? There is nothing you do that people don't know about. Right. Um, so you're a public figure, mm -hmm. and and you have to hold yourself accordingly in everything you do. Mm -hmm. So there is a certain amount of uh, pride. Um, uh, there is a certain amount of opportunity when it comes to being able to make the the organization I love so well. Um, be a better version of itself. Is there anything that you would like people to know about you, your family, Fort Jackson? Is there anything that we missed? So I think uh, one of my, my, if I close with, is that um, I'm very interested in making sure America understands their army. So Fort Jackson is open in order to be able to allow people to see what their army is about and the opportunities of the army. And if you, you ever want to come visit, just come on down. Perfect. Victory starts here. <laughs>